One of the more sobering thoughts at the moment is that as bad as things are in Joe Biden's stagflation miracle, we haven't even hit the full recession yet. When we do on present trends, we could come out the other end with a Japan-style zombie economy, one dominated by lobbyists and activists. That's because the modern recession playbook is pretty much set in stone, a set of suicidal policies that make the recovery as slow and as feeble as possible while transferring the maximum amount of resources from the people to the federal black hole. The standard recession story goes like this. When central banks crash the economy, it sends unemployment and bankruptcy soaring, filling food kitchens across America. That leads to deafening calls for federal action. Because when the pain is bad enough, the people beg to be controlled. Above all, they say, do something. And ever since the Great Depression, do something has meant two things. One, cut interest rates to zero, and two, expand federal spending as much as humanly possible. The problem is both of these are exactly the wrong thing to do. They stop the recovery in its tracks and they permanently shift us towards a zombie economy. We never actually recover. Now this is exactly what happened in 2008, years of stagflation that lasted until Trump. To see why, consider why the recession is happening in the first place. Because money was too cheap for too long, which funded a bunch of crappy businesses called malinvestments. When the Fed raised rates, those malinvestments started liquidating. Money was too expensive. When that happens in a cluster, we call it a recession. At which point the correct thing to do is to accelerate the liquidation to free up resources for the next generation of healthy companies. That means the federal playbook of free money actually stops the recovery. It throws a lifeline to the malinvestments and their billionaire founders, letting them keep hogging trillions of resources and millions of workers courtesy of cheap loans. Of course, it gets worse because the federal government piles in to the tune of another couple trillion in spending. That hogs yet more resources, for example, steel and construction workers, shanghaied into rebuilding racist overpasses instead of, say, a machine tool factory in Wisconsin. So on the surface, it looks great. The construction workers are being paid either way. The steel is being used. But the recovery itself was stopped. The zombies are marching while the next generation of firms, the ones who should be building the recovery, are starved of resources. It's exactly what happened in Japan these past 30 years, essentially running the recession playbook all the time, with sky-high government spending paired with sky-low interest rates, delivering decades of zombie economy while racking up public debt equivalent to $60 trillion in U.S. terms. So what's next? Brought to you by Unchained. What's next is, believe it or not, there was a time when governments actually fixed recessions by cutting federal spending and either holding interest rates steady or even raising them to accelerate the liquidation of malinvestments. Jim Grant wrote a fantastic book on the last time we did it right, 1921, called The Forgotten Depression, and I walk through some of that history in this week's article. Alas, the modern recession playbook is exactly the wrong thing to do because it does exactly what Washington wants. It expands Leviathan. Puts even more of the economy in Washington's pocket, it gives them even more control over our lives, and it scares voters enough to do what they are told. Read the rest of the article at profsanange.com. Okay, we'll be watching. See you next time.